Hey everyone, this is Dan the GM, bringing you episode 113 of What the Dice. Have you joined our Discord? No? Well, if you head on over to whatthedice.weebly.com, head on over to the links page, you can join our Discord and join all of our wacky weirdness. Don't forget to rate and review us on all your favorite podcasty apps. I know uh, Spotify, Apple, Podchaser, all of that. And uh, if you do, shoot me a message. Let me know. You can find us over at Twitter, at WhatTheDicePod. That's all I got. I'm going to shut up and let you guys get on with this week's episode. I'm Dan the GM. This is What The Dice, and we are so happy to have you. Enjoy. We walk into the storyteller's campsite. Everything is as it's always been. Our log that we've always sat on, the fire raging, the ocean in the distance singing its ocean song. His new hut has been finished. We look around and we see him standing, looking into the forest. We walk up next to him and he holds his hand out to silence us and his eyes never leave the forest. Our eyes eventually lock into the forest and we watch. The campfire fades away, as does the sounds of the ocean. All we hear is the creepy silence of the forest, just bugs chirping and the occasional bird. We look over at him and he nods, he goes, well, 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 my friends. It seems as if our rat problem has disappeared. Well, it didn't disappear in a firestorm of bullets and explosions as to Fibulus would solve it. But it, it seems as if our rat problem has solved itself. Well, he holds up the book and the book flutters open. It seems as if the adventurers have only dealt with parts of their contract. They must go deeper and find the nest. Sit, relax, and hear me tell. In the last episode, you guys got a chance to finally get deeper into the Godsfell tunnels, finding a strange line of rats that have made their way creating a makeshift ladder to get up and down inside of Godspell proper. This row of hundreds of rats had things of torn up metal, chewed up wires and the like in their mouth as you all were watching from a distance. Sending Hugin to go spy on them a little bit better, Kalila noticed a strange wire that ran the length of the mountain top or the canyon cave big opening place Dang. pop <laughs> leading up to a makeshift jerry-rigged turret with defibulous's luck of pushing buttons randomly that he doesn't understand you were able to unload every single bullet and everything that was inside this turret down raining massive destruction down upon the poor innocent rats and then blowing up the entrance that they created leaving nothing but viscera and metal bits scattered down the mountain cave thing. And we at least, I remember, we made sure we didn't harm the, the blue-eyed rats. Correct. Yeah. We only went after the red-eyed rats, I believe. Yep. Correct. Guys. That was exciting and loud. I want to make more of those. Except have them on the ground and have them roll around and shoot people for us. Why am I not surprised? Think how useful it'd be. It'd be very useful. I mean, and then, like, we can ship some, have the rat scholar ship some to Clyde so he can use them on skeletons and blow up more skeletons. Although, I don't know if Clyde is smart enough to use a gun. I didn't get to teach him that. Or did I? He can learn. Did I teach him? I don't think you got the chance to, no. Slacker. The Fibulous will shake his fist angrily at the sky. <laughs> Knowing him, though, 
He'd probably want to learn how to, like, mount it on himself so he could just walk and shoot people and still hit them with a sword at the same time. Sword, shield, and then he'll bless the bullet. Ooh, blessed bullets. Hmm. He did mention that that was a thing. He could bless your bullets. I mean... Technically? I mean, I don't know quite how that works anyway, since I don't follow the whole god stuff. But, you know, each their own. I wonder if there's a way that you could cast smite on a bullet. Oh, I think that would smite the bullet. It might smite the bullet, yeah. So probably Please don't smite anyway. my bullets. I won't smite your bullets. Now, go scavenge. I know you want to. What am I looking for? How can I help? Well, remember those rats we fought earlier that shot those things up in the air that blew up and tried to blow me up with them? Yes. Those. And shiny bits. Cogs, springs latches, you know, stuff that I collect. Alright, so if it looks like you would like it, pick it up. Got it. Pretty much. I'm only putting ten minutes into this. We gotta keep going, okay? Because you could scavenge all day. And that's a bad thing? When we have a big rat leader to defeat, yes. We can scavenge on the way back up as well. Yeah, that's a good point. We'll we'll get the most important parts now, and then on our way back, we'll get more parts. Fine, but I have a now. Here's a really interesting question. Hmm. Can a gelatinous cube use a weapon? I mean, they have all that stuff floating in them. Does that mean we need to be careful that they don't inadvertently scoop up like one of these dead rats and have a missile in it? Well, it would have to figure out how to make it go boom first. So That's it's easy. whether or not if it figures that out. Secondly, I don't know if the ooze would get in its crevices or whatever and ruin it. And three, I've never seen a cube use a weapon before, and it picks up all kinds of weapons. This is the first time I've ever seen one. Now, now, come on, let's scavenge. The previous will happily go skipping through the dead rats and we'll start scavenging. And Kalila will make an attempt to pick up things that Defibulus might or might not want and has described to her. All right, Faye, are you getting in on this? I mean, what else can I do? Patty cake with you can. It encourage them to push forward? <laughs> we agreed to a 10-minute scavenge. I figured that was like two perception rolls and we move forward or something. I will give you guys one perception roll each. That's fair. You can't expect us not to dig through the rat carcasses. Be glad right, I'm go not going, it. I want to skin all of them. Oh, no, there is no skin left. You guys <laughs> used exploding <laughs> rounds. No, the exploding let, me, let, me, let me reinforce. You guys used exploding rounds, armor-piercing rounds, slug rounds, and uh, fire rounds. Like, these things are just viscera. Metal might survive. That's why I'm letting you guys do the roll. But if it was organic, it is squished, splat. It, it is this brown. This cave was once like a dark, nice, natural brown. Now this is more of a blackened, blackened red crime scene. But if we make a mess, man. We do it right. You know, it is you and I. Uh, could you imagine the messes we're gonna make in Shadowrun? Let's stay focused. Uh, thirty-one for perception. Okay. Twenty-seven on mine. Okay. It is helping. <sighs> Please hold nothing. I was about to say, the defeated, eh, she kicks a, a, a rat, didn't find anything. <laughs> 31. All right, so as you guys poke, prod, and dig through, you guys find a handful of undamaged metal threading. A handful of strange little green pieces of plastic with metal circuitry. And you find one little microbomb that is currently flashing. Fabulous, that's a bad thing that it's flashing, right? Yep. Let me see if I can do anything with that. That'd be knowledge engineering or actual engineering? Actual engineering. And technically it would be disabled device. 24. 
So, Defibulous, as you start to crack open the shell and you see the exposed wires, you see a green wire, you see a red wire, you see a purple wire, and you see a clear wire. You start to snip wires, and the next thing you know, you are being thrown back, and you take four points impact damage, ten points electrical damage. I need you to roll percentiles to see how much of that gets through your armor. Ouch. 100%. It all goes through? I rolled the percentage, and it was double zero. Ow. Dude, that's the second time you've done that. So you take 10 points electrical damage. You are... Your hair's got little static sparks between it. Your gun is sparking just a little bit. Uh, yeah. You you don't feel like electricity is your friend right now. No, you guys would have heard it. Is. Hey! Ow. <laughs> that was adorable. Uh, I'm not trying to laugh at you. I'm laughing. <laughs> okay, I'm laughing. Faye is not. <laughs> right? I want to make that clear. God is laughing. Like, I, I am laughing directly at the fibulous. Like, this is hilarious to me. Well, Lila, of course, is going to immediately chase after Defibulous and make sure he's okay while I die over here, so one second. Yeah, no, rushing to aid. Oh, that was a shocking experience. Ow. He's making puns. He's fine. He's fine. I think next time I don't cut the purple wire. Is that the one that did it? I don't know. I cut several. At the same time? Yep. <laughs> that sounds like a bad idea. Yeah, too many variables. You're one variable at a time, dude. Oh, no. I figured it was going to blow up one way or the other. Then... Uh... Had to try, man. I'm, I'm, I'm handing him a healing potion. I, I have no way of telling what kind of internal damage a wall impact and being flung from a bomb is going to do to him. Well, good news is it didn't explode. It was just a lot of electricity. Also, the healing potions I gave you, Defibulous, is a 2d8 plus something. One second. I just have this mental image of this little gnome with a ball of electricity just flying through the air backwards. Yeah, that sounds about right. Did that top you back off? Uh, I'm like four, down, four HP down. All right, so you look nice and healthy. Maybe one scratch. Not counting the random pieces of electricity that are still sparking through his hair. If he yeah, Kalila's making sure not to touch him so it doesn't transfer to her fur. Fibulous gets a kind of grin, a, a, a smirky little grin on his face, and then flings his hands out. Let's see if he can fling the lightning in a direction. No, you can't because it's not controllable. <laughs> yeah, well, but he's still going to try. He's, yeah, he's still going to try, man. All right. That wasn't a question. That was a statement. Yeah. I would. Nope, didn't didn't work. Oh well. You guys were weird. I'll go over and see that. Oh, I wonder. You love it. Hey, Kalila. Hmm. He'll poke her arm. Are you, you trying to zap me? You get a little static shock. Clouds blur. We'd be like, ow. Hmm. Interesting. They'll walk over to Faye and try it. Nope. Dodge. <laughs> it, it's dispersed by now. Well, damn. It didn't have enough of a charge to carry on to a second target. Oh, well. Gee, thanks. You're welcome. Science. Oh. All right. So did we find anything good? Some stuff. Just the stuff that some wires and a couple of... Just hold the small handful of circuitry and wires she found that don't look too damaged. Got a good eye for it. Granted, they are still coated in blood, gore, and all sorts of organic pieces. I would have washed them off. Come on, Kalila is known for the water skin bathing. If it was like, well, I mean, you got a good eye for that. My question is, I want to, before we go down the mysterious tunnel in the direction we are planning, now that there's no more rats by the ladder dropping things down, is the hole big enough for me to stick my head through and look? No, uh, Defibulous ensured that the way the turrets hit it basically kind of collapses the tunnels inside. Oh, right. That was part of the goal. Okay. I did my job well. 
You did. Head bats. I almost thought you said head bats, and I was like, hmm. Oh shit. <laughs> but head bats. Yep, head good job, pigeons. Head bats. Head pigeons. Go see the nurse. Speaking of bat, now that you reminded me. Oh, crap. No. You're happy. Happy to help, sir. They ran the other direction because that was a big explosion, and they want nothing to do with that. Oh, heck yeah. Oh, good. All right. Well, Kalila will uh, head eastward cautiously in case there's more rats still alive. And she has no idea how close the big rat is and if that angered the big rat. So she's proceeding cautiously, ears forward, listening intently. All right. I need a perception and a stealth roll. From Kalila or everyone? Anyone who's following Kalila. 33 for my perception and 31 on my stealth. Okay. Nat, nat 20 on perception and a 23 on stealth. Nice. 30 on perception and a 28 on stealth. So as you guys continue on and study what's going like keep your eyes to the front and stuff like that you notice that most of the rats that were outside that chamber have scurried quickly and ran off leaving whatever debris they had in their mouths on the ground taking special care to watch what's going on around you you notice that this floor there is a enormous amount of organic material that is left on the ground like uh, it looks like at some point the rats were cleaning out other creatures you see dead bats that have their necks bitten you see small a couple of like older bones of dwarfs and you do see one that eh, maybe a dwarf or maybe a maybe an elf it, it's hard to say but there's a lot of organic material that is just sitting on the ground, rotting and decaying. And the, the, the moisture here is uncomfortably high. You see mushrooms growing out of this, the walls and off the ground. And overall, it is not a comfortable feeling. Wow, these um, rats are pretty um, efficient. Yeah, I'll give them that, that's for sure. Also, given how many rats are down here versus the ones that snuck upstairs, this is not just a rat infestation. This is something different. Ratageddon? Yeah, yeah, yeah we'll go with Ratageddon. I'm, I'm down with calling this the Ratageddon. I now have an episode name. You're, You're welcome. welcome. Ratageddon it is. That's Technically, cool. wouldn't Ratageddon be last episode because the, the, the rats face their own apocalypse of turret death? Yeah. Ratageddon begin? Ratageddon continues? Ratageddon part two. The ratning. The ratning! Oh, <laughs> Ratageddon the ratning. So it looks like they've killed dwarves and is that an elf? I can't tell. I will go and investigate cautiously. I think it looks like it work over there. Okay, so the bodies, it's not just dwarves, it's also like bat, rat carcasses, bats, and other, like, these are independent, like, small creatures, large creatures, stuff like that. You also see a couple oozes that they've killed, too. Oh, Jesus. Anything good in the oozes? No. Oh. Yeah, people, this is big guys. Hmm. I'm a little concerned. Don't you think the dungeon, our Mr. Blob guy friend, would have come through here and cleaned this all up already? You know, I was wondering the same thing, going, why hasn't, if he likes to eat organic matter, which typically oozes like organic matter. How old are these bodies? All right, I'm investigating corpse number one to the north. Perception? I'll hit the next, second one. 28. Okay. With the 28, you see that this is a dwarf. It looks like it was killed when a stalactite, the ceiling spike, had been 
dropped down on it. It looks like yes. it had crushed the skull, uh, and it looks like it was death on impact. It looks like anything that was metal had been chewed or stripped away from him and dragged off. And the body looks like it's been there for a couple of years. This thing's mostly skeleton and dried. It's been here for a while, years. It's moist in here, so it would still be, it would still have some rotting flesh. Okay, now I'll recant my uh, dried, but go, this thing's been here for a while. A couple of years, maybe. All right, let me investigate mine. Also, right. let's just say of a horrible misfortune, that spike hit him in the head as she's staring up at the ceiling like, wow, that was quite an unlucky that you're looking up at this, Since you're looking at the ceiling, roll me a perception. Yes. I have a 29 on my perception to look at my body. I have an over 30. I'm mathing. Oh, you're fine then. Okay. 30, 34 on me for my, my body. Okay. Kalila, when you look up at the roof, you notice where the stalactite might, whatever, the ceiling spike was. But you notice that if it was a normal, like it just happened to fall, it would be a jagged edge. Where you look up and where you look at where it was, it is a clean, perfect flat cut as if something had sawed through it or cut through it in a short amount of time when the slag tight fell it was not an accident well Kalila's seeing that up at the top of the ceiling is gonna go well that was no accident what was no accident that stalactite that fell down and hit this guy in the head that was no accident I mean, from everything we've seen the rats do, that wouldn't surprise me if they're dropping them on people. Can I tell how it was broken? You would have to climb up there. Hugin! Okay. Well, while Hugin goes up there, Defibulous, with your roll, you look at this body, and it's an elf. It looks like, based on the armoring and the age of the leather, you kind of surmise it is possibly a drow or someone who is common of the underdark one of the things you notice is that there is a puncture wound in their chest looks like maybe an arrow or something of the sort and it looked like whatever hit them went clear through their chest through and through nice wow how yes. old is that body yeah how old is this one um probably couple of years like three years that's an impressive something went right through this guy probably the dwarven food <laughs> <laughs> no nah. i mean well it's loaded into a project uh, into a cannon yes anything useful in this guy no everything that is metal has been stripped away it's just gross flesh bones and old fabric what yep. about like cloth maps or anything no. like that no nothing no personal effects, huh? All right, what nope. about my body? Faye, you look down at this dwarf, and you notice something a, a bit strange. The tanning of the flesh. The flesh that is still there. This body looks like it's probably been here a year or two. There's strange tan lines across the eyes and down the nose to the mouth, giving the shape of, like, a helmet. You notice that armor... There's no armor on him. He is just wearing cloth and garb that has been chewed on, and it looks like metal has been ripped off of him. You notice he's got no shoes on. He's got basically just cloth armor, and it's not even armor. It's civilian clothes. What you would wear under armor. Yeah. And you notice that around his neck, it looks like there was once some kind of medallion you have this strange inkling as if this was maybe a knight or a paladin that had been killed under here anything give me method of death roll me another perception check math 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 is grand 29 you look and you carefully like move the body around and you see in the back of the head there is a knife hole from the base of the skull and then up. Ooh, execution. It looks like if you do your your estimating right, it would be basically where the helmet meets, uh, matches to the collarbone. 
Hmm. That's not your average battle wound. What'd you discover? I had a dwarf. Looks like he was wearing armor at some point. And, uh, took some kind of bladed stab to the back of the head. But underneath his helmet, at an odd angle. That's not your average battle. Uh, somebody got a really, really lucky crit hit. Or they were a friend and knew how to betray and hit them. Yeah. Either this was an execution, or this was an execution. Interesting. Well, it sounds like so far all three of these guys were murdered. Deliberately killed. Now the question is, while Hugin's climbing up to the ceiling, I doubt there's any drag marks left over, or did these guys die where they stood? Hey, why hasn't the ooze come back over here to eat these guys? Yeah, that that that's what I'm wondering too. What makes this an off limits zone for that <clears throat> walking dessert that you're very well acquainted with? I don't know what you're talking about. Well, while Hugin is climbing up to the ceiling to check out the stalactite, Kalarly's going to check out the next closest body just to see if they also look like they were murdered. Okay. Y yep, I'm going to take this one over here. All right, so you're going to go. So Faye is going to the west. Uh, Kalila is going to the east, and I'm assuming Defibulous, you're going to the east as well. Yeah. As Hugin gets to the top, you can see he is patting at the ground and touching it, like trying to investigate it. And you get this inkling with your strange connection with him is the stone is smooth, like something with a lot of heat had burned through it and it is a perfectly smooth line there is no cuts no ridges no nothing like that you mean from the stalactite so on the ceiling not the ground yes okay i just want a clarification because i was like wait he's on the ceiling yeah well i mean i have the see through my companion's eyes so i can see what he's he's tapping at yeah well while kalila has the like glossed over eyes expression on her face she's gonna go that stalactite didn't break and describe how it's smooth clean cut like a butcher's knife to a squash right like it's just clean and smooth cut right through it well that's um I mean takes a lot of work to get a cut a stone that smooth exactly yeah, I mean, why, would anybody, why would anybody polish a stone on the ceiling after breaking it off to kill a dude uh, my, your questions is the same as mine. I'm just letting you know what I see. Hey, well, sometimes asking it out loud, somebody else will have an answer. That's true. You ever do that? You ever just kind of talk to yourself out loud, and when you hear it, it sounds different out loud than when you hear it in your head? All the time. Okay, good. So it's, we're on the same page here. So why would anybody... Unless part of the process for cutting it down left it that way. Is the broken portion of the stalactite still laying around in the guy's head maybe bits it shattered on impact it was that uh it was a soft enough stone to do the damage but shatter on impact not unless you want to try and figure out what stone pieces go with what i am not here for puzzles today yeah that's what i figured not that kind <laughs> i'm not here to make sculptures either hey this is not art class today um all right, so what do I find about my body? What'd you roll for your perception? Oh, shoot, hold on. Defibulous, what'd you roll for your perception? A nat 20. Okay. <laughs> 34. Okay. And I'm 30. Okay. I will start with Faye since she rolled the highest. Fine, then. Uh, as you look at this body, it's another... It's a human. In their hand, you see what looks like a wooden torch... And you look at it closer, and it's a torch of Everburn where the enchantment has broken off and dispersed. On their back is a loot that is crushed, and the the uh, catgut strings have been snapped. His armor, you could tell, used to be cloth, and it is not held up well, and it's only a, a couple of years old. All of his personal possessions have been ripped off of him. You see where you would keep a bag of gold where the belt had been chewed and the bag has been taken. 
You don't see any pieces of metal on him as well. But as you turn the body, it seems as if he was pushing something behind a stone or under a stone. And you find a journal of some sort. And the lock is still in place. Like a diary padlock. Padlock? A diary lock. Yeah. Um, well, that should be pretty easy to pop, so... So you'll work on that? Well... Even if I can't pop the lock with my roll of two, I'm pretty sure I can cut it open with a little bit of dagger work. Yeah. All right, while you futz with that, I'm going to jump over to short round. Short round, what did you roll again? 34. 34. As you look, this is another elf. Uh, body probably looks about a year or two old. The skin is tan and their hair is golden. You assume probably a high elf or a royal elf, something in that upper, well, I don't want to say upper echelon, but the richer type of elf. You notice that their armor has been stripped off of them, leaving just pieces of leather where it would have been reinforced on their back a single sword and a single shield sheath is still there so a wooden shield that the buckler part has been ripped off in a a leather sheath on their back but no again nope Hmm? but no blade no blade okay um again all personal effects have been taken away but you do find a small scroll opening it up it's just a simple adventurers wanted caves below the city of Godsfell has an infestation of creatures that have been harassing the upper city. Uh, To take on this quest, see the Adventurer's Guild in the the name of the city is given uh, has worn off with age. And you see a reward of 500 gold pieces per person. Hey guys. Hmm. I wonder if these guys all work together. Bodies are all nice. Well, then who killed that guy pointing to the, the dwarf in the middle? Um, I don't know, but this guy had, this elf here had a uh, flyer on him for come down here and kill kill things. Which How old is the flyer? Eh, the body looks to be about a year old or two. So everything seems about a couple years old. My question is, I thought the dwarves weren't allowing anyone near or in this mountain. I agree, and it didn't seem like they said that they've had this level of a rat problem, but more of it's become a problem recently. They said nothing about sending other people down here. And unfortunately, whoever, the city that this was issued from has faded off the uh, paper, beyond my skill to retrieve. Well, let's definitely keep it and ask uh, the mayor about that. There is a part of a buckler left back here. All the metal bits are gone. Probably taken by the rats. Is there teeth marks on the wood? Hey, yes. Take, yes. Who said that? <laughs> Did you guys hear that? I might have heard something that time. Ah, finally. I'm not, now I don't think I'm going completely crazy. Well, at least we know it's not residual effects from the leeches. Or the electrocution. It could be. That, well, I mean, you did zap me. I wonder if electricity imparts the ability to hear voices. And with that, Kalila's looking at her new body. (laughs) All right, roll for that. I had a 30. Okay. This is another human. You see on their hip two sheaths on one side, um, mostly for a short sword, probably someone who dual wields. Their armor looks like it used to be leather. The water moisture in the area has made it rot. Digging around, you don't find any personal effects. But you do find remnants of a map. Uh, It's old and corroded, and it looks like a way into the cave system without entering Godspell. At least that's what you're estimating, because you see like writing where it's like, enter from swamp, look for the word can't be read. Uh, If you see this black rock you've gone too far that kind of like very vague writing 
And you said it was to how to get from the Godsfell, but from the swamp. How to get into the caves of the Godsfell without entering through Godsfell. Oh, so we might have a quote-unquote map of how to get out. Correct. If we didn't want to go back the way we came. Correct. Okay, cool. Faye, you finally cut that leather and you slowly open it. And it's a personal log. Something akin to what you keep, except this seems to be written in... You see, like, limericks being written. You see songs being written. It's definitely a bard's diary. Near about halfway through, you see a page. It is hastily written, and it talks about how the adventurers, since they entered had been dealing with strange creatures. Bats that their wings are clear and arrows seem to just bounce off the wings. The rats are super aggressive and there's all these strange red lights that keep beaming down across and everything and, and cutting through their armor. And one of them talks about, or he talks about how someone, the name is kind of worn out, was feeling angry at what was going on and he felt that we were they were being sent in here to be a trap and he was calling the the paladin had been constantly pushing of no we need to go deeper we need to do this this is for the betterment of blah 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 the the normal paladin rhetoric mm -hmm. and apparently the high elf was tired of it and after a battle after one dwarf had a stalactite kill him and after something went through the drow's chest, the fighter caught a chance to stab a blade into the dwarf's neck. And then he said there was a loud explosion and he couldn't hear anything and he felt like there was blood dripping from his ears and he quickly wanted to hide the book just in case someone else would find it. And hastily written at the end is... The last thing I heard before I went death was someone saying, this is my domain. I am the Rat King. And that is where we end this week's episode. Well, 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 we friends. It seems as if the adventurers have stumbled across a small lie. At least, a perceived lie. Seems as if the mayor has hidden something from them. Or there is more at play. Nonetheless, it seems as if there is someone or something in the bowels of this mountain claiming to be the Rat King. A bard lost his life and his hearing, but was able to get that bit of information from beyond. Well, unfortunately, that is all the time we have for this eve. As always, me friends, may the dice gods bless your every roll. We here at What the Dice would like to thank Paizo for creating Pathfinder, Epidemic Sound for our music, as well as Sirenscape for our sound effects. If you would like to reach out to us, you can do so on Facebook at What the Dice Pod, Twitter at What the Dice Pod, and of course email What the Dice Pod at gmail.com. And if you liked our little adventure, please share us with your friends and rate and review us. 